everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Peak Bugger Designs. I've got one more counting sheet project for you this week. This is a celebration stamp set and a celebration set of dies. These are available uh, through uh, the end of September 2021. They are both uh, free with a $50 purchase. Each one, $50 purchase free, $50 purchase free. Um, so if you spend $100, you can actually get both of them for free. The, the dies are while supplies last, so make sure you get them sooner than later. They're very popular, and something tells me they're probably going to run out before the end of the catalog. Now, I decided the first thing I thought about when I saw these sheep was uh, sheep jumping over the moon. So I made kind of a fun little fancy fold card here with our sheep jumping over the moon. I'm pulling in the To the Moon stamp set. I love this image. My daughter is obsessed with the moon and the stars and she loves this stamp set too. So I've been trying to use it as much as I could. All right, now you're gonna start out with a piece of basic white that is three and three fourths by three and three fourths. I have cut, I have the large moon here and I have cut it out or I have punched out a, a circle from scrap paper that is about the same size, all right? And I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of adhesive. I learned this um, little technique here from one of our Stampin' Up! artists. All right, now, before we can stamp this, this is a solid, large, solid photopolymer stamp. And I find that sometimes that middle part there won't ink up on a hard surface. So if you put a mat down underneath you, this is actually from my Stamparatus. Um, we also have a piercing mat, you can use fun foam from the craft store. Just, it's gonna kind of give a little bit of cushion to help that stamp make contact all the way around with that paper. All right, I'm gonna stamp it over here on the edge. See how I did that? And then pull it up and we've got a crescent moon. Isn't that neat? Okay, now I'm gonna take the stars from the same stamp set and I'm gonna stamp them in basic gray all around the moon like that and maybe some right here overlapping then the sentiment I am using says love you to the moon and back and I don't need that mat anymore so let's move that and I'm going to put that right there in basic gray okay now we're going to set that aside and we're going to stamp our sheep we're also gonna stamp that background piece. And I've lost my basic white. Let's use this one right here. <laughs> okay, I am using the cute little sheep that looks like he's jumping. You've got several options in this stamp set of sheep, but I'm gonna use this one right here. And I'm gonna use my gray granite stamp and blends to color in his legs and his face. I'm gonna start with my light gray granite. Go all the way around. Don't color his eyeballs. Make sure those stay white. I'm gonna switch over to my dark gray granite and just add a little bit of shadow wherever you would see that wool overlapping. And I'm gonna make the hooves darker too for some contrast. Now I'm gonna take my light again and kind of just blend all that dark down into the light. Make it all nice and smooth. Okay, now get your cut and emboss machine. I'm gonna use the little cut and emboss machine today. Uh, it is perfect for these dies. They will all fit in here in case you have the cut and emboss machine and you were wondering. And I am going to put a piece of post-it tape on that die so that it doesn't slide because my plates are a little bit warped and I don't want them to slide while I cut them. All right, let's see how we did. There we go. Now we can put him jumping over the moon. I'm gonna use dimensionals, of course. Okay. 
I think I got one too many. Just probably need two. Have him jumping like that. All right, now I have a piece of gray granite that is just an eighth of an inch bigger than our sheep or our white piece with a sheep on it. All the measurements will be over on my blog, so make sure you jump over there and grab them. And we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna cut a little bit of the front of our card, um, our card base. Let me close that so I don't have a disaster <laughs> landing in the ink. All right, this is just a half sheet of cardstock on the eight, I mean, on the 11 inch side, I cut it at five and a half and then scored it at four and a fourth. We're gonna use our, um, our hello, what is this called? <laughs> Stamp and trimmer. You know, this is the fourth video I've recorded today, so I'm a little, oh. I'm gonna cut off one inch from this side and two inches from this side. So I'm gonna use this one inch right here, this marker right here, and I'm gonna take my blade, and I can see right here where that line is. Hopefully I can see it without sticking my head under the camera. And I'm gonna slide it up, all right? I'm gonna cut that off in a minute. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna cut two inches off of this side. So I'm gonna do the same thing right here and go all the way to the end. Now I can turn it and we're gonna go up. Let's see if I can get that right where it needs to be. And we're gonna cut that off and come down here and lay this down to match where our cut is and pull that off. So now you have the section here in the middle that makes it a fancy fold. And that's gonna give us opportunity to really kind of step it up here on the inside. I have a piece of basic white that is four by five and a fourth. And I have cut a piece of our So Saffron designer series paper. This is from the Subtles designer series paper pack. And I'm gonna put that on the left side. And then I'm gonna go back with my stars. I'm gonna carry over those stars from the front here on the inside. All right, we're gonna lay that down right in the middle. Now fold this down and we're gonna put this right here. Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna do dimensionals. One, two will probably be enough. And I'm gonna have this up almost towards the top, just about a quarter of an inch from the top. And I decided I didn't really like that piece right there hanging down. So I'm just gonna cut that off to match that edge like that. Okay, so now you can't see it down on the bottom. Now I have several embellishments I'm using. I've got the gray granite twine from the Twine Essentials Pack, and we're gonna tie a bow around what's left of that front piece here at the top. Gray granite uh, cardstock, gray granite twine, gray granite ink. It all matches perfectly. Now I'm gonna get some of our new little subtle shimmer sequence, sequins. I'm gonna add a few of those. I'm just gonna add a few little dots here if I can get my glue to wake up this morning. Come on, let's see, there we go. One there, one there, one there. And then I like to take my, take your pick tool and get that putty end and just pick up those sequins with that putty end of your Take your pick tool. Definitely makes this much easier than trying to dig them out with your fingers because there is a lot of them in there. Let's see, you know what? Let's put a few over here as well. There are several different shades in here too. There's some kind of clear, some silver, kind of a subtle silver, um, and then a real shiny silver. So you kind of have a variety to pick from. Let's see, that one's kind of hanging off the side if I can get it on there. Nope, let's see, come on, there we go. All right, now, last but not least, 
I have one more thing to add to this card, and you might not even be able to see it in the photo, but I'm gonna take our shimmery crystal effects and add a little bit of shine to those gray stars. It just kind of takes this card up a notch, gives it a little more sparkle and shine. It'll take about five, maybe 10 minutes for this stuff to dry. It dries really fast, I think. Um, five or 10 minutes, doesn't seem like a long time. And just put a little dot and you'll have just a little bit of sparkle. And there you have it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Um, don't stick your finger into the crystal effects <laughs> before it's dry like I just did. Make sure you click the link here on YouTube, hop back over to my blog so you can see um, the supply list and the measurements and a link back to last week's post that I had um, where I showed three more counting sheet projects. All right, everybody, thanks so much. Bye-bye.